A gateway of last resort functions like a host default gateway setting. Whereas a router would normally drop packets with network addresses for which it did not have static or dynamic entries in its routing table, when a gateway of last resort is set, it will send those packets to the specified IP address instead. In this example, we cannot deploy a gateway of last resort on the middle router since it must route traffic in more than one direction and only one gateway of last resort can be set on each router. We can, however, deploy it on the perimeter routers and it greatly simplifies the routing table. Routers themselves function as default gateways for their clients, so we cannot actually call a gateway of last resort a default gateway itself. However, for all intents and purposes, its function is identical to that of a default gateway configured on a network client. A gateway of last resort, also called default routing, should only be implemented on a stub network and perimeter routers. To implement a gateway of last resort or default routing, you need to do two things. First, from the router's global configuration command prompt, type the command IP route 0000, which means any IP address, and 0000 to represent any subnet mask, and then the destination IP that you want to send the default traffic to if there are no other static entries or dynamic entries in that router's routing table. Next, follow it with the command IP classless, which will transmit subnet information and tell the router not to drop the packets if it doesn't know to which network they should be sent. Once again, in the previous frame, the 0000 means any network in any mask, and the 199.207.22 represents whatever IP address you want to route the traffic to. The IP classless command tells the router not to drop packets and to send subnet information. Another way to implement this same functionality is with the command IP default dash network and then the destination IP address to route the default traffic to. This also would be typed from the global configuration command prompt on the router. It produces the same results as the previous command in the previous frames. Also note that when you examine default routes with command show IP route, they will show up as S preceded by an asterisk and then 0000 to represent any network or subnet mask forward slash zero via and then of course the destination IP address that you specified to send any of that default traffic to that you don't have dynamic or static entries for. Once again, 199.207.22 is simply the route to send all packets to whose destination network address does not match a static or dynamic entry in the routing table. In the last example, we looked at setting up a network with purely static routing. And now we're going to look at it, setting up a gateway of last resort. And with static routing, you might have noticed on the, the two end routers, they each had to have three routing table entries because they only had two adjacencies as opposed to the middle router, which had three adjacencies and only required two. But notice that all of those entries went to the same IP address. And by that, let me log into our router and show you what I mean. Kiwi, enable, Kiwi, puts me in privilege mode, and let me do show IP route. And if I do that, you can see all my static connections here. Here are my two direct connections. And then for 50, 40, 30, notice they all go to 22. They all go to this IP address here. Well, there's an easier way to do this, but only, and I repeat only for routers that are considered to be on stub networks. Stub network is a network that, you know, there are no other networks beyond it. And by that we mean on the end router here, if I go to network 10, there are no other networks beyond network 10. So that would be on the perimeter or the end or the frontier or the border of the network, right? It's a stub network here. And this over here, you know, 10 is and 50 over here is considered a stub network. So routers that are connected to a stub network, for those I can configure a, well, what's called a gateway of last resort. Sounds mysterious and ominous and maybe even spooky, but basically it's like a default gateway, except that a router itself is a default gateway, so we can't necessarily call it a default gateway, even though that's essentially what it does. Um, it sends packets that, you know, don't have a routing table entry or direct adjacency to that IP. Um, but since the router itself is a gateway, we call it a gateway of last resort. Um, and you know, remember, the only condition, again, is it has to be on a stub network. So in other words, a router that's on the end or perimeter of a network. Couldn't be on the middle router. This would not be considered a stub network because it has several networks beyond it on each side. In this case, 40 and 50 and 20 and 10. But these guys, again, I'm just trying to review the idea of a stub network. There's no other network beyond 10, no other network beyond 50. So we would consider these guys on the endpoints and they would be on stub networks. 
Therefore, they're good candidates for a gateway of last resort. Um, so to go ahead and let's go ahead and log in there. And once again, open up hyper terminal and Kiwi and enable and Kiwi and what I need to do is remove these static entries. If you notice, every single one of them is pointing to the same IP address, 22. And I can replace all of those with one uh, gateway of last resort. Because any basically any traffic that's not on the local network 10, where does it go? It all has to go to 22. So we could simply specify that with one default. Ooh, I'm going to set it with one gateway of last resort entry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want to go into global configuration mode. Config T, and I'm gonna, instead of IP route to remove IP routes, I use the no IP route. And not all commands, but a lot of the IS commands, if you prefix it with no, it negates it, it deletes it or removes it or stops it, so to speak. So I'm gonna do no IP route, and the first one we'll just do these in numerical order. We'll do 199-207-30-0, um, the whole network, class C subnet mask. And it was sent to or routed to 199.207.22, I believe. And I'll hit the up arrow because the rest of these are practically identical except for this little part here. So 30 on this part, I'll, on the third act title, I'll do 40. And once again, in the third act title on this part, I will do 50. Okay. And if I do that, control Z, drop back down to privilege mode, and use my show command, show IP route. Notice all I have now are the two direct connections or adjacencies. Okay, and I want to go back to global configuration mode. And this time we're going to specify a, a gateway of last resort. To do that, I need to do two things. I need to use all zeros for the network and the subnet mask, and that means all networks and all masks. That's one thing I need to do with the IP route command. The other thing I need to do is use the IP classless command, which changes the default behavior of the router. The default behavior of the router is if it doesn't have a, an adjacency, or if it doesn't have a, an entry in its routing table of where to send a packet, um, doesn't know where to you know, send it, it just drops the packet. That's to cut traffic on the network. So normally that's a good thing. Um, but in this case, with the gateway of last resort, we're saying, hey, if you don't know where it goes, you don't have an adjacency, no routing table entry, just pop it out the gateway of last resort and make it the next router's problem. You know, pass the buck, so to speak. So that's the IP classless command. We're going to use both of those. So the first one, IP route. And zero 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 all networks zero 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 all masks, and in this case a class C subnet, but all masks we don't really care, and uh, it's a class C network address, but all addresses we don't really care. It's a gateway of last resort, and where to send it? Well, same place. Um, it's going to be one nine nine two zero seven twenty and two, which is where we sent it last time. So again, any packet that's not on the local network, no you know, adjacency, no static routing table entry, it's going to send it out now to 199.207.22. Let's verify that. 199.207.22. That's where we want all our traffic to go. And then the last thing we need to do is, again, the IP classless command. So IP, IP classless. And that will specify that as a gateway of last resort. So I'm going to do Control Z to drop back down to privilege mode. I'm going to do Show IP Route once again. And notice that I have two adjac adjacencies or direct connections. Notice I have a static route. In this case, there's an asterisk here. That's all addresses. And via it's going to, again, be sent to 199.207.22. Also notice right here it says Gateway of Last Resort is 199.207.22 to network any network. Any network that's not a direct connection. So effectively, I've replaced three static routing table entries with one gateway of last resort. Okay, so that router has been configured. And let's go and do the same thing on the other stub network, or in other words, our other perimeter, our border router. And the password is Kiwi. And I want to go to uh, privilege mode, so enable Kiwi. And I want to go into global configuration mode, but again, before I do that, let's pull up our routing table. Show IP route. Once again, notice I have two adjacencies or direct connections and three static routing table entries that we had previously added. So those need to be removed. So I'm going to do config T to go to global configuration mode. I'm going to say no IP route. And in this case, I want to choose 
Again, let's do this numerically. So we've got 10, and we've got 20, and we've got 30. We'll start at 10. So 199, 207, 10, 0, the whole network, and a class C subnet, 255, 255, 255, 0. And where is it pointed to, or where is it going? In this case, out to 41. If I pull this down again, look, all the traffic's being sent over here to 41. So 199, 207, 41. And now that we've got that in, the next two are almost identical. So I just hit the up arrow, and I'll add my 20. And remove that one. And I'll add my 30. And remove that one. Okay. So those have all been removed from the routing table entry. And again, if I go back down to privilege mode, and I use my show command, IP route, all I have now are two direct connections or adjacencies. Back to global configuration mode, and now I'm going to set up a, a gateway of last resort. So IP route, and all networks, 0, 0, 0, 0, all masks, 0, 0, 0, 0. And where do I want to send it to? 199, 207, and then 40 and 1. And let's double check, and again, remember that that was this address here, 199.207.41. Not the direct interface, or the direct adjacency, but in this case, the next router, the neighboring router, but an interface on a network to an adjacency or an interface that our router is on. So 41. That's where we want to set it up. That's where we want to send the traffic. Okay, so that entry has now been added as the gateway of last resort. And remember that I need to use IP classless. And this will, again, change the default behavior of the router so that if it doesn't have an adjacency or if it doesn't have an entry in its routing table or nowhere to send a packet, it'll send it to, you know, out through the gateway of last resort. And let's talk about for just a minute why this only works on a stub network. If you think about it, traffic's all going in one direction. And that's why the gateway of last resort works on a stub network, on a perimeter router, because traffic's all going here if it's not on a local network. And here on this end router, traffic's all going this way if it's not on a local network. You can see where I'm moving the mouse uh, cursor. Um, however, the problem on, the, on this router is there's more than one direction, right? I mean, there's a network over here, 10, that's got a route to, and there's a network over here, 50, that it's got a route to. So we couldn't set a gateway of last resort on a middle router, only on routers connected to stub networks. And that's evidenced by the fact that, remember, once again, when we looked at the routing table entries, they were all pointing to the same IP, and they were all pointing to the same IP. But if you pulled up the routing table for the middle router, it would not be the case. In this case, you have one routing table entry that points to this IP and another routing table entry that points to that IP. So it's not a candidate for a gateway of last resort. This, however, is. Now that we've done that, Control-Z to go back down to privilege mode. Use our show command, show IP route. And once again, notice that we have two direct connections or adjacencies. Here is our statically configured route with a wild card, any network. And notice what it says here, gateway of last resort is 192.0741 to any network. Now let's test it out. So to test it out, again, we'll open up Artemis and let's see how we can ping. So we'll try to get as far as, first we'll try to get as far as the router. So 199207 10, 1, which is the gateway on Artemis. Nothing changed there, so obviously we should get four echo replies there. And there's a direct adjacency on the router, 21. We should be able to reach that with no problem. Now, here's where we'll start having problems if our gateway of last resort is not set properly. And that's where I want to go to 22 over here. And of course I'll need my static routing table entries in the middle router set correctly. So in this case, 21, and I'm going to try to ping um, 22, and no problem. And now I'm going to go to 31, direct adjacency is no problem, 3010, on the other side of the 10 network, no problem. I'm going to go to 41, the direct adjacency should be no problem, and I'll go to 42, the other side of that network. No problem. And then let's see what else we want to test. We're getting all the way to here. Should be able to get 51 with no problem, a direct adjacency. And then we want to test these hosts over here. So let's do that. We'll get try 51. 
51. Four echo replies, no problem. And let's do 50, 10. 11. 12. And 13. Okay, so with those ping commands, remember the packets and their echo replies are going all the way over here and all the way over here. And the way it's configured, we have two routing table entries here in our middle router. And just in case we've forgotten, let's bring those up. In privilege mode, Kiwi, and we use the show IP route command. And notice that here are our direct connections, um, our adjacencies, and here are our two static routes. And we've got to go in two different directions. And once again, this is why we couldn't set a middle router or router that's not on a stub network, um, a border or um, you know, a perimeter router, we, we couldn't use a gateway of last resort there because you know I'm sending traffic in two directions. But on the other hand, these, these stub networks, these perimeter routers, yes, because traffic's only having to be routed in this direction and then the middle router takes care of routing it back this way or that way, depending on which way it needs to go. But in this case, we can see that all of our entries have been set properly and we can connect.